Welcome back, folks. This is lecture number four in our series dealing with industrial electricity. What we're going to do today is talk about series and parallel circuits. But first, we're going to do a quick review. We're going to talk about energy and power, especially as it relates to motors. Let's suppose you have a 20 horsepower motor that is 85% efficient. And you're asked to find the input power. Our opening move is to take that 20 horsepower and convert it into kilowatts. We know there are 746 watts per horsepower, which gives us 20 times 746. So that's about 14.9, you can hit the engineering button there if you like, so 14.9 kilowatts. Our next step is to remember this equation that tells us the efficiency is power out over power in. So we said the efficiency is 0 0.85, actually let's do that the other way. Let's bring that down here. The efficiency is 0 0.85 is equal to the power out, which we just calculated as 14.9 kW over the power in. Solving for power in, we end up with hit the engineering button. So we end up with 17.5 kW. By now, you've noticed that I do indeed like these power flow diagrams. So this is what our motor looks like. Our power in is here at 17.5 kW. Our power out is here at 14.9 kW, which means we lost 2.6 kW along the way. By the way, there's a classic problem here is people get these flip-flop. So remember, this is the output power. And that 14.9 kW is the same as 20 horsepower. You know, again, look at it this way. If you have a motor, the shaft output power, right? When we talk about that, we're talking about this speed in RPM and then a torque. Right? That determines the output power. And that part right there, the speed and the torque, gives us 20 horsepower for this particular motor. We should mention that most of this power here is lost to heat. What will happen is inside the motor, the windings will get warm. Right? As the current flows through them, they heat up because they do act like small resistors. So you lose some power that way. There's a fan in many motors. You wouldn't think it, but those windings have to be cooled off. So now we have this fan that's turning inside the motor, and that's called windage loss, you see. And that fan takes a certain amount of power in order to run it. There's a few other losses that we'll talk about later in this class, including friction and hysteresis due to the alternating current that's flowing in the windings. Again, more on that later, though. Let's work one more motor problem and then we'll move on to our parallel resistors. So suppose you're given a five horsepower motor. You know that the voltage in is 24 volts DC, and you know that the current in is 190 amps. And you're asked to find the efficiency. Now this looks like a difficult problem, but it's really not, as long as you keep your bookkeeping straight. So we have input characteristics and we have output characteristics. And you got to put everything into its right place. For example, we know this has an output of 5 horsepower. We can convert that very quickly into kilowatts. Again, 746 watts per horsepower, which means 746 times 5. So this is 3.73 kW. That's the output power 
in kilowatts. What we need to do now is find the input power in kilowatts. We're given voltage and we're given current. And we also know this thing here, this pi, right? We played with that before. And with our cover-up method, we know that power, cover-up power, is a current times a voltage. So we could say that the power in is the current, in this case 190 amps, by 24 volts. So 190 times 24 gives us a power in of 4.56 kW. Power in, power out. Now we can calculate that efficiency. So eta, that's our symbol for efficiency, is power out over power in. Our power out is 3.73 kW. Our power in is 4.56. So 3.73 divided by 4.56 gives us an efficiency of about 82%. Chances are you're going to see these on the next quiz and exam. You're going to be asked to do a power flow calculation. Remember, for a motor, the output power is measured on the shaft. It's RPM and torque. There was another equation which tells us that the horsepower is the torque in foot-pounds multiplied by the RPMs all over 5252. Okay, again, that is the output power as measured at the shaft of the motor. And we can convert that quite easily into kilowatts. And this type of problem is also very nice. It makes you keep track of what the mechanical side is doing and what the electrical side is doing. So here, the input was electrical and the output was mechanical. And in this case, we converted them both to kilowatts and then we ran our efficiency calculation. If you haven't already done so, we will soon do an experiment in the lab dealing with series and parallel circuits. This will be done using DC motors. From that lab, we made a few observations. For this one, we said that there was the same current for all motors. For this circuit, we said there was the same voltage for all motors. We also made some statements about the voltages. In this circuit, we said that the voltages on the motors, when you added them all up, was equal to 18 volts. So another way of saying that is the summation of the voltages on a closed loop is equal to zero, or what I said earlier, where the voltage supply is equal to the voltage load. All right, so that was for our series circuit. For the parallel circuit, we said the summation of the currents is equal to zero, or another way to say that is the goes intas got to equal the goes outas. In this circuit, we have this going in, and we have the current to each motor going out. And the current going in, as I recall, it was about 600 milliamps, was equal to the current going out. So 200 milliamps there, 200 milliamps for this motor, and 200 milliamps for that motor. Okay. I think we covered this. We talked about this property being Kirchhoff's voltage law, and this property here as Kirchhoff's current law. So KVL and KCL. Okay, new topic, series resistors. If we have a circuit such as this, we'll assume this is 12 volts DC, 
let this be 10 ohms, let this be 10 ohms, and 12 ohms here. This is the important equation. This is the one you want to write down in your note card. The total resistance, R total, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus, and we can extend that to N number of resistors. For this circuit, R total is equal to 10, so that's that resistor, plus 10 is that one, plus 12. So our R total is equal to 32 ohms. Don't forget the units there. From the battery's perspective, right, from the battery's perspective, it cannot tell the difference between the 32 ohm resistor and this combination of resistors. In fact, you'll often see me draw circuits like this where I'll, I'll get rid of the battery and what I'll do instead is I will show a person standing here looking into the circuit, which is really you with your multimeter. Right, so you with your multimeter with the probes looking into that circuit. And what do you see? Well, in this case, we see R total is equal to 32 ohms. And that's no different than this circuit down here where you see, so we're looking in, R total is equal to 32 ohms. Ohms. So that was series resistors, and we said that's the equation you want to remember. Now we'll do parallel resistors. We'll start with a simple circuit, 12 volt battery, and three resistors. Let this be R1, R2. R3, 30 ohms, 47 ohms, and 22 ohms. There's two ways to look at this. You could say the total resistance is equal to 1 over 1 over the first resistor, plus 1 over the second resistor, plus, and so on and so forth, until we add up all of them to the nth resistor. Right, so that's one way to do this. Another way is to say R total, correction, is to say 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus, and so on and so forth, till you get to the last resistor. And I suppose there is another way. You could say R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. We'll put parentheses around this. And then we'll raise this to the negative 1 power. Again, each of these says exactly the same thing. Personally, I prefer this one, and I'll show you why in a moment with the calculator. All right, so this circuit had 30, 47, and 22 ohms. So our total is, correction, 1 over R total is 1 over 30 plus 1 over 47 plus 1 over 22. Did we get those right? 30, 47, 22. 30, 47, 22. All right, let's try this on the calculator. So to enter 1 over 30, you can do that this way. Type 30 and then use this x to the negative 1 button. So that's the same thing as saying 1 over 30 plus 47, but it's not 47, it's 1 over 47 plus 1 over 22. We solve for that. This is an intermediate answer, so that tells us that 1 over RT is equal to 0 0.1. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for our total, so we have to hit this 1 over x button one more time. That takes the answer and inverts it. 
So R total is about 10 ohms for this particular circuit. Again, that sequence on the calculator was 30 inverse plus 47 inverse plus 22 inverse equals inverse. And then the SD uh, button to get back to that. All right, so 10 ohms. So far, we have series circuits and we have parallel circuits. Let's work two examples just to make sure we're on the same page. So example. Okay, that was a lot of writing. This is a series circuit. You can tell because it goes in a loop, right? A series circuit. Um, you know, if you wanted, you could start on this journey right here and you could walk around the circuit and you would find there is only one path and you come right back to where you started. So it is a series circuit. The total resistance, so R total is 14 plus seven, plus 20, plus 15, which gives us 56 ohms. Make sure that's true. 14 plus 7 plus 20 plus 15 gives us 56 ohms. Okay, good. We can redraw the circuit now. So 56 ohms. As far as this 28 volt power supply is concerned, these are the same circuit. They both appear to be 56 ohms. Since we're here, let's put an amp meter into this circuit and see if we can't figure out what the total current is. So back to our cover up method. If we're looking for a current, we cover that up. It's a voltage divided by a resistance. So the current is 28 volts divided by that resistance which gives us 500 milliamps. Okay, that's good to know. And that means that everywhere in this circuit, we have a current of 500 milliamps. 500 milliamps through R1, 500 milliamps through R3, 500 milliamps through the 28 volts power supply. If we were curious, if we're curious, we could figure out what's going on with R3. So we could talk about the voltage on R3 is, let's see, a voltage. We cover that up. That's a current times a resistance. Do we know the current? Well, of course we do. It's 0 0.5. And we know the resistance. That's 20, which means there is 10 volts across our resistor R3. We could even calculate the power through R3 if we wanted to know it. So power is a current times a voltage. So our current, again, 500 milliamps. And our voltage, we just calculated that. So that is, that is what, 5 watts? We could have also used that other formula we talked about, where we talked about current squared R. Right, so the power in R3 could also be calculated as current squared by resistance. So that's 0 0.5 squared by, by, what was the resistance? By 20 ohms? Let's see what we get there. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 20. Yep, same thing. We get 5 watts for that as well. So you're starting to see there's multiple ways to solve these circuits. In one of the follow-up classes, we're going to present something called a voltage divider, which will make this even easier to work. Okay, that was one example. Let's do another. All right, we can start by trying to figure out what the current is at this part of the circuit. So we'll call that the current of the source, right, where the 13.8 volts DC is the source. 1 over the total resistance is 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 
come to the calculator, 8 inverse plus 4 inverse plus 3 inverse equals inverse equals. So we end up with our total is about 1.41 ohms. You'll notice that this value is smaller than the smallest value in the circuit. So that's for a parallel. You might have noticed the same thing for your series circuit. This value is greater than the largest resistor in that circuit. Okay, so series, the value will always be larger than the largest. In parallel, the value of the combined resistance will always be lower than the lowest. We're almost there. What is that source current? So a current is a voltage divided by a resistance. So I source is the voltage, so that's 13.8, divided by the total resistance. So 13.8 divided by 1.41 gives us 9.8 amps. While we're here, let's take a look at R3. So we could say the current on R3 is equal to 13.8 divided by the resistance by 3. So that's about 4.6 amps. By the way, from inspection, can you tell what the voltage on R3 is? And the answer is, well, certainly, because this is essentially one node and this is another. So that 13.8 volts DC occurs across each resistor. And one last thing while we're here, the power on R3, the power is a current times a voltage. Let's see, 4.6 amps by 13.8 volts should give you 63 watts. The other way you could have calculated this, you could have said the power on R3 is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance, which would have been 13.8 squared divided by, divided by 3. So let's see that. So 13.8, whoops. So 13.8, by the way, there's a squared button right here. So squared divided by 3. And there it is, 63 watts again. We did mention Kirchhoff's voltage law earlier. We call that KVL. And what it tells us is that the algebraic sum of the potential rises and drops on a closed circuit is zero. Symbolically, this is what that looks like. The summation of the voltages in a closed loop is equal to zero. Consider this. We have two power supplies. We have a voltmeter. A voltmeter that's reading 18 volts DC. And this power supply reads 10 volts DC. And the question is, what is this power supply's voltage? So Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that if we were to travel in a loop around this circuit, right? This is the series circuit. If we were to travel in a loop, we would find out that the voltage is equal to zero. So let's start here in the lower left corner. And we'll set a rule for this momentarily, but we're going to call that negative 10 volts. Minus, again, because we're entering on a negative terminal, we'll call that X for the power supply here. Plus 18 is equal to 0. So we entered here, and we said that's a negative. We entered there, we said that's a negative. We entered there, we said that's a positive. Solving for this, we would say that negative x plus 8 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 8 volts DC. And you might have done that by inspection. Right? If you have 18 volts on one side, and you have 10 plus something else on the other, that something else must be 8 volts. Let's set up some rules. 
if you are going to walk on a circuit, if you are going to walk on a circuit, put that in a different color. If you're going that way and you walk into the positive terminal, that becomes plus. So if this was a nine volt source, we would say that's plus nine volts. If you went the other way, right? if you were to walk in on a negative terminal, exit on a positive, we would call that negative nine volts. Here's an example. Our voltmeter is configured to measure the voltage A with respect to B. We'll let this be 2 volts, 10 volts, and 3 volts. We're going to walk around this circuit and see what we can see. Starting out, we enter on this 2 volt source on the positive terminal, so that becomes 2 volts. We enter the negative 10 on the negative terminal, so that's negative 10. We enter the 3 volts on a negative terminal, so that's minus 3. Then we say plus the voltage A with respect to B is equal to 0. Let's see, that's negative 11 plus VAB equal to 0. So the volts A to B is equal to 11 volts DC. Let's do another example. We'll let this meter read 15 volts DC. We set up for our journey, starting in the lower left-hand corner. We walk into the power supply, and as soon as we do that, we're on the negative terminal, so that's negative 24, plus the voltage on R1, plus, and be careful, we have to remember that the red wire is associated with a positive, so we would call that positive 15 is equal to zero. So VR1 is equal to nine volts DC. Some people like to use a mountain analogy when we're talking about voltages. And we could talk about us starting out at 24 volts. And we could talk about this here being 15 volts. And the difference in potential is 9 volts DC. But perhaps that'll help. It's another way of looking at the problem. We had series. We had parallel. Now we're going to move into series parallel circuits. Here is an example. Okay, a little more challenging, but really not so bad. If you look at it, you could say that R2 and R3 are in parallel with each other. What we'll do is we'll draw a box around those components, and we'll call this the resistor of the box. We can solve for that by saying 1 over R box is equal to 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20. You'll recognize that as the equation for parallel resistors. So solving for that, R box is equal to 10 inverse plus 20 inverse equals inverse. So that's 6.6 .6 ohms. At this point, we take what was in the box and we redraw the circuit. So we have our 10 ohm as before. That's our R1, that's 10 ohms. But now we have what was in the box as this piece. So now that is 6.6 .6 ohms. We can do this one more time, and by inspection, I think you see it, that our new resistor our new equivalent circuit is 10 plus 6.6, .6, so that's 16.6 .6 ohms. 
again, as an observer looking here, you cannot tell the difference between any of these circuits. They all look the same. There is a shortcut that we'll use, especially later on in the class. We could say the total resistance is equal to 10 plus 10 in parallel with 20. This is that first 10, and that is in series with the parallel combination of the 10 and the 20. R1 is in series with the parallel combination of R2 and R3, which we see right there. This notation makes things a little bit easier, and as we go along and you gain more experience, you can cue that directly into your calculator. So you might say 10 inverse plus 20 inverse equals inverse equals, so that takes care of the parallel piece, plus 10. And there we are, 16.6 ohms. Got two more examples for you, and then we shall call it a day. So an example. And what we want to find is we want to find the power, find the power of resistor three. Well, where do you start? Well, let's start with what we know. We can tell that this is our R1 with 10 ohms. And if we unfold this circuit, we can see that R2 is connected up like this. So here's your R2, that's 10 ohms. Now it looks like R3 and 4, looks like these two are in series, doesn't it? Right, those two are in series and share this node and this node. We could draw those two like this. So R3, R4, and both of those are 10 ohms and 10 ohms. Once you get to that point, the circuit isn't so bad. We just redraw it a couple of times, simplifying at each stage. So this is 10 ohms, 10 ohms, and this, because they're series connected, that becomes 20. Now this is the piece that we're going to redraw. So here's our 10 ohm. And now we have a resistor here that is 10 in parallel with 20. So this piece here, 1 over R box, is 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20. So we come over here, 10 inverse plus 20 inverse equals inverse. Okay, so that's 6.6 .6 ohms. And finally, we have this, where the total resistance is 16.6 .6 ohms. Let's add that power supply back in. I think we said it was, oh, we didn't say it was, did we? There we are, it's 100 volts. So let that be 100 volts. Our total current, the current on the source, is a voltage divided by resistance. So 100 divided by 16.6, six amps. Okay, so now we go back to our original piece. And we know that there is a 6 amp current flow in that direction. If that's true, right, if there's, if there's 6 amps flowing through that circuit, we could make a statement about what the voltage here is. Right, we could talk about the voltage on R1 is equal to the current times the resistance. So current times the resistance. The voltage on R1 is 60 volts, right? So this is 60 volts. And if we use that Kirchhoff's voltage law, we could say we start out at negative 100 plus 60 
because our red wire was there, plus VR2 is equal to zero. And we chose these two points right here. So the voltage on R2 is equal to 40 volts. Okay, again, all we did is we just went round this loop here, we went round this piece. And that was a closed loop. We said that 40 plus 60 is equal to 100. Okay, this is getting messy. I'm going to redraw some of this with what we know. We have 40 volts that appears across R2 and also appears across R3 and R4 that are connected in series. From there, we can calculate the current. If you were curious, the current on R2 is 40 divided by 10. That's this 10 ohms there, so this is 10 ohm resistor. And the current on R3 is equal to the current on R4, because they're in series, is equal to 40 over 20. So that gives us 2 amps there, and this gives us 4 amps. And together, they should give you 6. We said that before. We said there was 6 amps of current flow that way. Now we say there's 4 amps that way, and there's 2 amps in that direction. Okay, so the, the goes into is equal to the goes out of. So sum of the current in is equal to the summation of the current out. Okay, again, there's our 6 amps there. Oh, are we done yet? Nope, because we were looking for the power on R3. I think we're there. So power is equal to current squared resistance, I squared R. So we'd say that's 2 amps squared, or just 2 squared, by the resistance, which we said was 10 ohms. So the power on R3 is equal to 40 watts. <laughs> Let's take another look at this. We started out with this circuit. It was nice and clean without all this writing on it, but there it is. We started by calculating the total resistance, and we did that by redrawing the circuit. We redrew it once, we redrew it twice, a third time, and finally a fourth time. So each time we took the resistors that we knew were either in series or parallel and combined them. Right? Again, every time we did it, it was more simplified. When we got to this point, we said we have a simplified circuit and we're able to calculate the source current. You could think of that as a current meter right there. And we said that that current meter reads 6 amps. We went up here and we said that current meter exists here. There's six amps. And because it's in series with R1, there's also six amps here. Right? So six amps through those portions of the circuit. Knowing that and knowing the value of this resistor, we determined that there was a 60 volt drop across it. Using Kirchhoff's voltage law, we said that the one side where there's 100 for the source has to equal the other side where we have 60 plus something else. And that something else we established as a voltmeter here. And we said there must be 40 volts at that point. So there's 40 volts across R2. Right? So that, that's this path here. And then this path here, those two are in series. So 40 volts across R2 directly, and 40 volts across the series combination of R3 and R4. Knowing the voltage at 40 volts, and knowing the resistance of each resistor, we could calculate the current. For R2, we determined that to be 2 amp. For R3, we determined that to be 2 amperes. And... Now that we knew that, we could use our 
power is equal to I squared R calculation to figure out that the power on resistor 3 is 40 watts. Many steps. In the near future, we will go over a shortcut for this, something called the voltage divider in the current divider, which will make this slightly less messy. One last thing. I did mention this. If we have an R total is equal to something like 10 plus 2 in parallel with 3 in parallel with 5, can you take that and put that into circuit form? So what this says is we are looking into the circuit. We see a 10 ohm resistor in series with a parallel combination oops, let's add that, of a 2 ohm, a 3 ohm, and a 5 ohm resistor. We could calculate that as 2 inverse plus 3 inverse plus 5 inverse equals inverse equals plus 10. So that tells us that the total resistance, our total looking in, is 10.97, which is close enough to 11 ohms. That's enough for today. Come back next time, we'll talk about the voltage divider and the current divider.